Well, hello, welcome. It's Adrian. I'm here with Edward from the Purpose Company, and we're talking again about purpose into action. Welcome, Edward. Thank you, Adrian. Nice to talk to you again. Where, where are you? Where are you today? I'm uh, well at home. Uh, like still a little bit post-corona, working from home. Um, but uh, well, to be honest, I enjoy it also because with the family around, that's also great. It has some advantages. Where's home? Home is, uh, well, it's near Amsterdam, just outside Amsterdam, a uh, suburb called Busham. Uh, so it's a little bit uh, greener. Uh, also, uh, green is also good for, for your happiness. And uh, we go to talk about quite a lot as well. Yeah, and I, I love the greenery behind you. I'm surrounded by red. So I'm in what the architect described as the terracotta room at Four Acres uh, today. So we've got a nice contrast between the lovely green behind you and the terracotta behind me. Edward, describe to me your, your you and I have known each other for a little bit. I think you have a very interesting purpose. D describe your purpose. Yeah, well, of course, uh, uh, that, that's an interesting question because, of course, I'm working all day with purpose, uh, mainly for, for companies. Um, but I, and that's also something I, I looked into a lot uh, about what is the definition of purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you translate it, it's, of course, it's an English term. Uh, so we in the Netherlands, uh, it's also, well, challenging to translate it. But... What we see as as purpose it can be the, the biggest goal, and that's something we actually with the purpose company are not using. Um, but when when you look at the biggest goal in life, and I've uh, explored it as well quite a bit, it's like happiness. Uh, so happiness is the the highest goal you can achieve in life, and uh, well, and happiness is even a more complex uh, um, well uh, word than uh, than purpose. But when I look at purpose. Um, it's also like uh, what you, uh, based on your skills and your talents, how you want like, to contribute to the world. And so, it, but the first definition is like, well, being happy. Um, and it, on the next level, for me personally, is like, I really want to contribute to the happiness of other people. And mainly that's, in first instance, it's focused on, on my tribe. Uh, so the, the hundred people around you that are close to you. So more, first of all, my family, but also, uh, the, the broader family, uh, uh, your friends, um, uh, and of course you have different roles in life. And if I look at my own talents, um, it's really more focused on my my commercial sense, uh, my business sense, uh, my communication skills. And based on those two, I really want to contribute to the happiness of other people, uh, so they they can flourish and uh, well and help to contribute to a better society. I think that's really interesting, isn't it? You talk about happiness being one part of it and the other part is contribution. Do you think there's a link there with you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs where you've actually got to satisfy level one before you can move to level two? Do you think there's a relationship there? Totally, Adrian. It's, it's exactly what you say. It's, um, and it's one of also the elements I, uh, or, or the, 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 the Maslow pyramid is really what I also use in, uh, well, in my coaching uh, um, because first, of course, you have the basic needs, and when you go up in the hierarchy, uh, you're going to real, really the self-fulfillment, and and self-fulfillment. And if you have like your own safe environment, um, then you get a chance to help others indeed. So it's really, uh, really intertwined. And and that's of course eh, what they say: one of the most important elements of being happy is contributing to others. Mm -hmm. T tell me about your purpose journey throughout life. What are those kind of crucible moments that made you feel comfortable with being who you are and activating your purpose through your work? Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, uh, also in happiness, uh, your your youth is really important. Um, I had a I had a great youth, uh, stable youth, um, and uh, back then I thought about well, maybe I will become a doctor. So I'm really to to help sick people, uh -huh. and then I thought, well, sick people, uh, well, it's maybe not my really my thing. So maybe I should help sick companies instead. And a sick companies, click is well, it's not maybe not the right way to put it, but I really wanted to make companies do better, you know, or make them better. Uh, another way to put it. Um, so th then I decided to to study business economics in Rotterdam, at the Erasmus University. And and then I well I read about a research about the, the people happiness at work, and there you saw that 70% of the people that are working are from not satisfied to really unhappy, 
Mm. Only 30% is from satisfied to really happy in their work. And I thought, well, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. well, I'm now you know, well studying business economics and I want to be part of a big company or a smaller company, whatever. And 70% of the people working there is not happy. I said, well, I really have to do something about that. So that's actually how I, uh, well, entered the labor market. Uh, but like, well, many of us, we, we get influenced by many, well, things in our environment, uh, decision you want to make. And like you, like I said, you have a different roles. Eh? So you have your role as a friend, you have your role as a partner, and you have your role as a, someone who wants to make a living. And of course, I made some decisions there um, that were never focused on money, by the way, because that's, well, the, the, well, the, less, the least smart thing to do, to go for the money. Um, but I wanted to do, have nice roles, fulfill some dreams in the future. Um, but I, there was always lacking something. And actually what I was doing was um, I was helping people in companies to be more successful. And I thought if I make them more successful, they will be more, they will be happier. Um, but actually it's the other way around. Yeah, people should be happy and then they become more successful. And in the meanwhile, I started writing a book for my two sons. And actually it's a little bit strange because it was I started writing before I got the kids. Um, but it was really also like to put for myself on paper uh, what my well, best advice would be to my younger me. And hopefully that would be my own kids. Yeah. And that was actually a, a great part of my journey. And in this journey and uh, or in this, this this book I was writing that it, but well it's also about being happy in life and like I said ha well being happy is even more complex than purpose and there are so many elements that are that influence your happiness um, but one of the models uh, that that well that became well, well part of my my book and I of course I uh, well I, I, I took it here to uh, to show you uh, it's in Dutch so uh, uh, th there's no um, uh, <laughs> no commercial edge here, but uh, I, I wanted to show you also the, the model that's in there, and that's 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 the purpose model. And some people they know it from other elements. Uh, so it's really like about um, so where is your talent? And if you have your talent and you have your uh, uh, the things you like to do, you have then you're in your passion. Yeah. And if you have the next level of passion. And you're going to to look at what your contribution is to society. Then you will end up at your purpose. And based on that model, I thought, well, that's a nice way to help companies even better than I was doing before by, as well, selling software or uh, having a better a better uh, approach to the market. And so I want to help people and business become uh, well more efficient, more successful. And I thought this is the edge. This is where it all comes together. That you really help people to find their purpose in the in the work they are doing and there you have like this great win-win-win situation so I was always looking for win-win and this was like an extra win so you have people becoming more happier business becoming more successful and you contribute to, to society so that was in a nutshell uh, my my journey uh, Adrian to uh, to uh, well my purpose journey so hopefully this is an answer to your question it is Edward and I think it's a, it's a real common theme that we see emerging from these kind of conversations, purpose conversations, is where we reflect back. And for a lot of people, there's a, a moment of realization what their purpose is. And it's only upon reflection that they realize that there were the times that they were happiest were the times that they were actually using those skills, those talents. Exactly. Yeah. It's not always necessarily helping other people, although that's part of my purpose. But it's doing the things that you're good at, that you feel fulfilled. Um, and I think, yeah, I think I do think that's a very common theme in the realization of one's purpose. And and to your point, it, being successful, the least best measure of that is financial reward. Yeah, yeah. So actually, there was the, the fourth circle in the, in the model I showed you. Eh? So uh, if I, I believe if the top three circles are fine and you're working from purpose, then, of course, the money will be there as well. Yeah. And of course, in the end, money is like oxygen. Mm -hmm. eh? You really yeah. need it. Yeah. But on the other end, it is also uh, uh, it's still in, this, in the world we're living in. It's also the energy. Eh? So it's also the energy that's flowing from pe between people and companies. Yeah. Um, but it can also be like... 
an addiction. Uh, so that's that's the difficulty in money. Uh, so you really need it because it's oxygen, but it can be well also be like an addiction, and that's that's the hard part. But you need it anyway. I, I think it's just really important actually to mention that, isn't it? We cannot live in a world unless we're really fortunate or very naive where we don't need money. Yeah. Um, but to but to understand that it's like oxygen and need it to breathe is quite useful, um, because. While you might go in the pursuit of better oxygen by climbing a mountain or standing in a forest, you don't generally go out every day and say I need oxygen. And what you do is you go out and you find food or you find happiness. And I think that's a really great pursuit. I also like the phrase that you, you put there, working from purpose. And again, I think that's something um, obviously at Unilever that we believe in. Uh, we believe making sustainable living commonplace is our purpose and, and everything we do is driven from that. Um, but I think one of the questions that now, I know I come across, so I'm going to pose it to you is, sure. you know, how do you marry up the need for the business to have oxygen? The yeah. business has to succeed and that feeling of wanting to do the right thing. So what is your advice? You know, what is your counsel to a business owner that says, you know, I want to look after my staff. I want to do all these, these things here, but they're not actually talking about their business. They're talking about the people. What does that mean? Um well, the, most of the time, that that's like a starting point. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that, that's what I well try to give it as an example. That sometimes you 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 get into a conversation with with an HR manager or a CEO or an owner of a company, and they have like a starting point. Um, but it is always influencing a lot more. Yeah, so it's like um, yeah, if you if you want your company to be purpose driven. And it will influence the employees. Uh, they will be more productive. They will be uh, uh, have less sick leave. And that's of course all the research that, that there is available. Uh, they uh, they stay longer. Uh, they will be ambassadors for the organization. So they will, so the attractiveness for the company will be more better. And on the other hand, it's also like uh, purpose driven companies. They have more loyal customers. Uh, so they. They well, they they are willing to pay a little bit more. They spend they spend more. So it's really contributing in that way to the to the whole organization as a well on, on the business terms eh, and the business goals. And even then, eh, that's that's something that's of course with eh, with regard to Unilever a great example um, eh, that that even the stock value goes up compared to non-purpose driven companies. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, and and of course not to not to forget, of course the most important thing is contributing to society and whatever it is, uh, it can be like uh, being more green, uh, being more focused on uh, inclusivity or the planet. Uh, so uh, it can be everything, and we don't we don't mind. What is the starting point? A company comes to you and says, "We want to be purpose driven. We want to be purpose oriented." What's the first step? Yeah, well, for us, it's it's uh, the first step could be, of course, was depending on the company because some sometimes a company has a purpose, but they say, well, it's not lived through, so people don't know about it. It's the same as the mission and the vision. It's it's a sentence somewhere on the website or in the annual report, and nobody knows about it, or for sure not by heart. And that's that's a nice one because that's English. You 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 say, you know it by heart. Yes. And in 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 the Dutch, we say. It, you weigh them out your hoofd, so you know it well from your brain, eh? so you remember it. Yeah. And uh, and that's exactly where we come in. So we, we prefer actually to help the company to put purpose on paper, and we're really going to look for it together with the team of ambassadors in the organization. So someone high in the organization, but also a number of people throughout the organization, a little bit lower in the organization, or at the lowest level in the organization, and we're going to find the purpose. So it's not something that we we think of and say, well, this will be good for your marketing strategy. No, it's really something that's already there. And then we look for what is your, really your contribution to society and what's your why eh, from Simon Sinek as well. Um, and when it's on paper, we also translate it to an internal storyline. And, and that's, of course, the great thing about purpose in, in our definition, uh, an internal storyline. It has to move you. It, has to, has a, it needs to have an emotion. Because otherwise, it's like another, like, well, boring sentence that nobody mm. wants to remember. Yeah, of course, we do something with money or with beer or with products or whatever. And uh, and then it's for people, it's easier already to remember. 
But in the second phase of our, well, coaching, we're really going to sit down with all the employees. Yeah, so we really want to talk to them in small groups of maximum of 12 people, because we want to know who Adrian is mm -hmm. and what is his intrinsic motivation. So what, what is your role in life? And, and that's a little bit different maybe. We're not really going to look for your purpose, but we're going to look for your intrinsic value. And then I'm really pointing at my heart uh, because that's what, I, that's what we want to do. And then we connect from your intrinsic motivation, we connect it to the purpose. And then it's like logical or more logical for you. Um, and it's always like we need more than one meeting. And it's always like at least two workshops where we're really going to figure out who you are and your colleagues. And you get to learn from your colleagues as well and say, well, this is interesting. I have a colleague that never knew that he or she was like, well, looking at life in the way he or she told you, just told you. Um, and then it's going to really the intrinsic motivation. And, and on the other hand, what we also do, we always connect it to the SDGs, uh, so the Sustainable Development Goals. Mm -hmm. And to also make it really big. So on one hand, we make it small and personal, but on the other hand, we want to also show it that it's really big and it's really this via the tribe of the organization, you as an individual are contributing to global goals and really saving the planet. Edward, are those the, the UN SDGs? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember those from the, the Unilever Sustainable Living Plan. It was very closely connected to that and I think that's that's true I love what you're saying that and again I think we can probably all relate to that enfranchisement of a goal because if it's a purpose statement that was designed by the board it's the board's purpose statement if it's a purpose statement that sits in a report somewhere that's all it is but yeah. if we can get the organization to feel that they've had a part in creating that purpose statement then it's our purpose. Exactly. So that's, yeah. that's so much more powerful. A purpose-driven organization, it has to come through the people. You cannot have a purpose-driven organization that is steered solely from the top because you'll turn around and there'll yeah. be nobody there behind you. No, totally, totally with you. And that's exactly it. And of course, uh, we also uh, always want to have the ambassador team in one way or the other mm. present like the direction of the purpose to the board. Yeah, so it, it has to be approved. Yeah, so that's what we that's what we do. And on the other hand, it's like the ambassadors team is also like responsible to spread it through organization as well. Yeah, so find ways and think of ways they come up with. And of course, we help them to, to think of creative ideas. But it's they, it's the team who come up with the ideas and really roll it out. And and we go actually we also go one step further because we're also going to look. What does this new purpose and internal storyline that is approved by the board, what does it mean for you, mm. individual, in attitude and behavior? Mm -hmm. So think about it. So we also, and that's, most of the times we do it with larger groups, yeah, up to 50, 60 people. So talk about each other. What does it mean in your attitude and your behavior? So what does it mean for your, uh, for your uh, employee journey? And on the other hand, what does it mean for your customer journey? So it's really like uh, looking at uh, also really get it into the, well, the system uh, of, of the people. So how would you, you've probably got this down, but how would you summarize the advice that you would give to your children based upon who you are? Yeah, well, the, 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 the core of, of the whole book is actually uh, try to be as much as yourself as you can. And it, and it is, for a lot of people, is really difficult. And I always say, well, you're truly happy if what you, what you feel, what you think, and what you say, and what you do are fully in line. Yeah. Um, and that's actually the, 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 the biggest advice I give, them, give to them. And, uh, and of course, and that's, that's also, well, uh, I can show you an, an, a picture on, on the back of the, of the book. It's about me being in a rough sea with my boys. And and the only thing I do, I will, well, of course, I protect them in the beginning and then I push them and I have to let them go. And they decide the direction they go through in this sea and they can fall over and they decide where they end up at the beach. And and that's what, what what's, well, what's applicable to everybody. You have your own way through life. You're, you choose your own road. And uh, but try to listen as much as possible to yourself who you are and what you, well, what you are and where your talents are.
So that's the key the key message I give to them. And I, well, actually, I apologize in my book for giving them too much direction because that is not a goal. <laughs> How do we condense the advice to our children? I don't know, but I think you've done a pretty good job of it there. My my children are getting a bit older now. They're going to be 16 this year, 16 and 14. And and I think authenticity yeah. and uh, congruence, which is a very English word, you know, but it's being, um, uh, it's doing what you say you're going to do. It's being consistent is really important and super hard when you're young. I remember working with uh, graduates at AIG uh, a few years ago in their early 20s and the pressure to conform based upon this mirror is incredible. And yeah. I don't think that you and I have faced that kind of pressure in our lifetimes. And I do think it's I think that's a story as a conversation for another time, uh, Edward, perhaps over a, a, a cup of coffee or, or some wine. But yeah, it's, I, it's uh, I do think that knowing your purpose living your purpose for young people in this generation is is very difficult when every day you're bombarded with different versions of happy and good which perhaps yeah. aren't true. yeah edward this has been fantastic uh, you're a very smiley person I, I have to thank you for speaking in english because if i was speaking in dutch then it would have been a very short conversation <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I love the work that you're doing for the Purpose Company, and Thank I love the joy and the happiness that it brings you. So, and on a personal note, looking forward to developing our friendship and getting you uh, getting you together soon. Yeah, sure. And, and look at the great new building you're in. It's it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, that was all right, wasn't it? Yeah, great. It was easy. I have to stop the to stop the recording.